the screen is visible? Yes, sir. The screen is visible, sir. Okay. Okay, then we'll start the next topic. Our recording is on, I think, right? Yes, sir. It is on, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, now coming to the uh, next uh, discussion on concentrating collectors. Sir, yes. sorry to disturb you, sir. Sir, ah, yes. uh, last class recording, sir. Huh. Uh, if we click on that link, uh, it is uh, opening Google mm -hmm. uh, Gmail, uh, sir. Uh, but recording is not. Uh, no, no, not you have right. to open in a browser. You copy the link. Okay, sir. Okay, that link you have to copy paste on either uh, Firefox or Google Chrome. Okay, sir. Then you can try. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. In mobile, it will happen in Android phones. Okay, sir. You open in the laptop, you are using your college mail ID or personal mail ID? College mail ID, sir. Okay, okay. So copy paste that in Google Chrome. Let's see. Okay, sir. If you directly click, it will show some error. Yes, Even sir. I have tried here. That okay, sir. Link. Copy paste the mail, this link. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Any other things? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Yeah, coming to the other. Uh, Discussions. Now, today we'll discuss the important part of uh, concentrating collectors. So, here we need to discuss about the definitions and some of the relations uh, which are used in designing or deciding the performance of uh, concentrating collectors. So, in common or in general, if you see uh, all the concentrating collectors we are designing, depending upon more the reflecting or refracting areas, so that you can collect or concentrate more solar energy onto the small area of the absorber. Okay, if you see the normal flat plate collector before going to these definitions, a normal flat plate collector, what you have seen is uh, we had same absorber plate area and the cover plate area or the same glass area, which is transparent and absorber plate. Both are same areas where concentration ratio was almost same or equal or we can say concentration ratio is one. So in such cases, we are not telling that flat plate collector as a concentrating collector. So to make it a concentrating collector, we have to go for number of mirrors or reflecting surfaces such that it will uh, reflect or it will try to focus the sunlight, more sunlight towards the absorber plate. So in this uh, conditions, we are going to design the concentrating collector such that Absorber plate area should be small and uh, the reflectors or the transparent cover, what is the cover is uh, maintained for the absorber plate and the reflector area we are going to increase and we are keeping the absorber plate as it is or we are going to reduce it by which we are going to increase the concentration ratio or else I can say we are increasing more sunlight to the absorber plate or focusing towards the absorber plate which is very small compared to the uh, we can say reflectors so coming to the discussion to the concentrating collectors which all parameters one should know the so first point you can see concentrator here just a minute yeah the full page so in the concentrator you can see it is a optical subsystem which redirects or the directs the solar radiation on to the absorber. So here we are going to increase the area of this concentrator. Okay, by increasing the number of reflector plates. So as an example, I can take same flat plate collector. You can see here in this example, the sketch you can see all of you. Absorber plate is kept at the bottom. It is having the cover plate also. Earlier case, non-concentrating type, we are discussing only about the glass cover system and the absorber plate. But here in the concentrating type of flat plate collector, you can see we have added some more reflectors. Okay. One in north side, one in south side. Okay. We can also go for four type of uh, or four sides of collectors or the ref uh, reflectors. But in that case, what will happen is east side and west side at the time of sunset and sunrise, it is going to make some shade or make some uh, darkness on the absorber plate. So that's why on the east side or west side, we are not going for the reflectors for the flat plate collector, but we can go for north and south side, provided the 
angle of these plates are kept open to the observer plate as well as the solar radiations should not form any shading on the observer plate. So like that we are going to decide this angle of reflectors and as we go on increasing the area of these reflectors or number of reflectors, we can absorb more solar radiations. So this is one of the examples where concentrate concentrators are increased. So these are the optical systems or optical subsystems which are helping us to absorb more solar radiations. Okay. So optical subsystem which directs the solar radiation onto the absorber plate is called as a concentrator. So that is coming into picture in this concentrating type of solar collectors. The next all of you know the absorber or the receiver. So will be normally used to denote the subsystem consisting of absorber. So whatever the part receiving the solar radiation is called as a receiver. Or we can see in earlier discussion, we have seen this type of uh, concentrating collector, cylindrical parabolic type. We can see here in, in this one glass cover is also there. It is also a subsystem of the absorber tube itself. So absorber tube or plate, whatever is there, and whatever is covered, the subsystem or the accessory of this absorber plate, like glass or the metal plates which are soldered or welded here, all these parts become the receiver part. Okay, so receiver part is what? It is a subsystem or a complete system which includes absorber, glass cover, okay, or connecting elements like uh, your metal plates or metal tubes. So all together, we are going to call it as receiver. Next part is the aperture. So it is denoted by W. So here, aperture you have to remember by this sketch. Here, aperture you can see whatever the area is kept open to the solar radiations by the concentrator. For example, uh, can you see the cursor what I am moving here on the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So this opening to the solar radiation, you can see the absorber tube, whatever is connected here, red color tube, it is open to solar radiation with smaller area. Only the perimeter is open to the so solar radiations and only top of the surface is open to solar radiations and bottom of the surface if you see it is not kept open to the solar radiation so to increase this focusing solar radiations what we have designed is the concentrator itself is like a parabolic and cylindrical shape one side it is half circular or parabolic other side it is having a length of some cylinder so in this cylindrical type of parabolic absorber or the collector you can see the maximum area which is kept open to the solar radiations to absorb that area we are going to call it as aperture area okay or the bit of, uh, below sketch you can see one bowl is taken the opening of the bowl okay so this opening which is required for the solar radiations to pass through is called as aperture area or you can also define it as a plane of opening the plane, the cross section area which is opening to the solar radiation is nothing but the aperture area. Some more examples you can see, like here in the paraboloid dish type, you can see this circular disc cross section area, 5 by 4 d square. This cross section area itself is nothing but the aperture area which is kept open to the sunlight to reach towards the concentrators or the mirrors. Here also you can see the aperture area is this length between the two reflectors and the width of the reflectors, how much we are going to utilize. So if you consider this is the opening of the aperture or this is the area of the aperture. Similarly here, here you can understand easily. This is the width of the collector, length of the collector. So this opening for the solar radiation, how much it is kept for different uh, designs that we are going to call it as aperture area. Okay, so definition wise if you go is a plane of opening for the concentrator through which solar radiations are passing through and for a cylindrical or linear concentrator it is characterized by a width okay while for a surface of revolution like a parabola dish or a circular type of uh, mirrors okay it is having some diameter of the opening it depends on different designs then coming to the absorber area for example i said aperture area similarly absorber area i can also define as 
the area which is receiving in this sketch you can see the red color tube here at the top okay so bottom of the tube is going to receive the focused solar energy from the circular cylindrical object or the mirror similarly in this sketch you can see the receiver area is the bottom side this orange color bottom side plate whatever you can see is the receiver area the area which is open or focusing or receiving the focused solar energy from the reflectors is called as receiver area or the receiver and also you can see receiver what is the receiver is the flat plate collector and in this receiver i can say in the liquid flat plate collector or the air heaters i can say area of the glass cover is also equal to area of the absorber so i can tell the entire plate itself as a receiver so area of the receiver is always less than the area of the opening of aperture that's why the concentration ratio can be improved or we can increase the concentration ratio okay so always the receiver or the absorber area will be less compared to the aperture area that's the meaning of aperture area or the receiver area sorry so next using these two aperture area and receiver area we are going to define one more factor which is very very important for this concentration collectors and this number decides the efficiency or the type of collector and the application also that word is nothing but concentration ratio c okay so this concentration ratio is the ratio of aperture area or the effective aperture area to the surface area of the receiver or the surface area of the absorber plate so if you take this ratio of aperture area which is higher value to the smaller value of upper, uh, absorber or the receiver area then the value what we are going to get is we are calling it as concentration ratio it's just a number that number decide decides the temperature or the quality of solar radiation concentration or the type of application for which we can use so these all things can be decided by this concentration ratio c okay so these values of concentration ratio starts from unity why unity because if you take a simple solar air heater or simple liquid flat plate collector without any reflectors so in such case we are taking glass cover area as well as absorber plate area with equal areas many times so in that case if i take same area and if i take the ratio it will be unit or one number so from that unity the number is going to increase as you increase the number of reflectors of the area of the reflector okay so it will go up to thousands so how it will be thousand we we'll discuss later next is the intercept factor gamma so this intercept factor is i can say with a sketch so first you can see here in the sketch say for example solar radiations are received in this area in the circular area and it is reflected back to the absorber plate or the tube so how much fraction of the solar radiation total solar radiation is focused back and received on the absorber area that is called as intercept factor or you can see here in this sketch to understand more clearly total solar radiation received on the collector is this much a big yellow uh, color line you can see but after this reflection you can see not equal or the same energy is transferred to the receiver what is happening there will be some losses because of this mirror connections or the alignment errors okay or because of the tracking system what will happen some of the energy of the solar radiation is lost to the atmosphere because of the optical efficiencies so that efficiency is also considered here with the optical uh, index ratios so what is what i am going to tell you is say for example i am receiving on the aperture area 100% solar radiation that is energy from the sun after this reflection or refraction little bit amount of solar radiation is lost now what is the fraction left in the reflections that fraction of solar energy what is received on the receiver is called as intercept factor okay so that is also can be denoted by number itself 
it will be always less than 1 because we are not getting 100% energy from the optical systems. Okay. So, it is a fraction of radiation which is reflected or refracted from the concentrator and is incident on the observer or the receiver. So, the, the value of that intercept factor generally close to unity but not unity. Means what? The optical systems till today are not 100% efficiency. Means they are not completely reflecting, they are not completely refracting also. Somewhere because of the system problems or the mirror design problems or the reflection problems, there will be some losses in the optical system itself. So, due to which some of the fra uh, factor or the some of the fraction of the solar radiation will be lost to the atmosphere and remaining maximum solar radiation, no doubt in that, that maximum solar radiation is received to the absorber plates. Any doubts up to here? Concentrator, receiver, aperture, absorber area and the concentration ratio or you can say intercept factor. We can put in a message chat box if any doubts are there. No doubt, sir. Okay. So coming to the next definition, which is very, very important. Acceptance angle. So to define this acceptance angle, we can refer again this sketch. So here in this sketch, you can refer any type of design. Uh, one of the first acceptance angle, what we need to understand is the bottom sketch, the circle. Okay, this sketch you can refer here. Here, a general case is taken with respect to Earth atmosphere. Say, for example, this uh, aperture area, whatever is shown, AA, which is facing towards the sun. This circle itself is a sun with the small radius R, whatever is shown. This is like a sun you have taken. And the angle subtended by the solar radiations from the sun on the given area of the Earth surface, if you see. That subtended angle itself is an acceptance angle for the earth. Or the location on the earth, whatever is taken as small area here or the aperture area, total area, the angle subtended by the solar radiations from the solar surface itself towards the area of that receiver or the absorber. So that angle of subtend, subtended angle or the angle of aperture is nothing but it depends on distance from the receiver or the distance from the solar sunlight and the radius of the sunlight. This is a general case. What I am telling you is the general case and this receiver or the absorber is after the aperture area. It is going to receive the solar radiations after the light is focusing from the aperture area. Is that clear? So this subtended angle if you see it is one half as shown on the top side. Similarly if I take the subtended angle from the bottom side what will happen? It becomes two times. 2 times theta of subtended angle or else I can tell 2 times the uh, the aperture or the acceptance angle 2 theta alpha. Then similarly the question comes if it is for earth and sun then what about the uh, small uh, aperture area and the receiver for the given collectors. So in that case what we are going to do is here in this aperture area left side sketch you can see the aperture area is there which is larger then the absorber plate is at the bottom so whatever the line joining these ends left side end or the right side end if we join the straight line that will give us the acceptance angle from the both sides if you join both the lines from acceptance area or the aperture area and the line joining the ends of the absorber area it is going to join at a given distance and it will form some angle. So that angle two times if you consider left side and right side, I can call it as acceptance angle 2 theta alpha. Similarly for the other type also, like here parabolic cylindrical type, if you see the solar radiations received by this rectangular surface area, okay, all these radiations are reflected back to this absorber tube. Now if you draw a line which is joining either the width, ends of the width towards the tube, 
you can join or else the lines two lines you can take to the diameter of the tube and can join to the center of this circular point so there i can also recall it as a acceptance angle here also you can see the line joining the end of the end, aperture area and the line joining towards the end of the receiver area so if i join these two lines one half i can tell it as acceptance angle that is theta alpha if i take another half this will be two times theta alpha so same thing it is denoted here two times theta alpha is the maximum angle at which incoming sunlight can be captured so this maximum angle how to decide or how we can decide the maximum concentration ratio that is also discussed in later stage but until that we will just understand what is the definition so this acceptance angle is the maximum angle at which the incoming solar light can be captured by a concentrator and it is focused towards the observer plate so we need to always focusing on capturing the more sunlight and focusing towards the small area because the focused sunlight or the beam radiation will have maximum temperature range or working range so that the application side or the within time we can get the maximum temperature or the maximum efficiency in the applications okay so these collectors with large acceptance ang angles require only occasional adjustments because if the acceptance angle itself is more i i can say you for the parabolic dish type if the acceptance angle itself is very high very big dish is there uh, collector and the receiver is very small in such case the shading of this receiver on the collector will be less also because of the large acceptance angle what will happen the solar radiations received will be very high also i can adjust it or the tracking system required for this system will be less i can adjust it only uh, two three times say for example sunrise time i'll keep it one angle towards east at sunset time i'll keep at a given angle towards the west and at the noon time i'll keep it in the facing towards the sun at the noon time okay so like this we can adjust depending upon the acceptance angle if the acceptance angle is very less say for example in this uh, flat plate collector so in the flat plate collector what is happening what are the solar radiations are reflected from the mirrors will be continuously changing and also here as i shown only two reflectors are there continuously we have to track that observer plate with reflectors okay because here aperture area and the receiver area will be almost nearby and the concentration will ratio will be very less so in such cases we have to go for tracking systems okay, so more of the time we go for the tracking system for the cylindrical parabolic uh, collectors and the concentrating flat plate collectors but for the paraboloid type of collectors of the furnace type or the solar towers the tracking system is a requirement is very less okay, that is all about the acceptance angle now coming to the so to write these equations so as i told concentration ratio is nothing but ratio of aperture area to the receiver area that is denoted by aa by ar so for an example they have given area of the aperture on the right side sketch you can see width into length and similarly receiver area so receiver area bottom side of the complete perimeter of the diameter of tube if you see where the solar radiations are received towards the receiver area that perimeter of the disc of uh, the tube you can consider so that is phi dl for complete area so d into l for the approximate bottom side area the next is maximum concentration ratio okay so depending upon the acceptance angle how to find out the concentration ratio or the maximum concentration ratio so this will decide the limiting factor means for say for example i can say a paraboloid dish to be designed or say for example a cylindrical parabolic design should be done in such cases we should know what is the minimum concentration ratio and what is the limit for the maximum concentration ratio so always we are uh, trying for this, uh, reaching the maximum concentration ratio or the maximum efficiencies so here what we have done is other than area of the aperture or receiver depending upon the acceptance angle how we can improve the concentration ratio so maximum concentration ratio in the two dimension if you want to decide only by 
uh, 2D dimensions in x and y direction area. In that case, you can go by this equation, 1 by sin theta alpha. In three dimension, if you want to decide, in three dimension means what is the aperture area and this collector area. See, here, collector is a curvature, not straight, as we are taking W into L. It is only acceptance plane. But actual area, if you see, it is hence a circular area. In such cases, if the circular or parabolic shape or different shapes, in that case, we are taking 1 by sin square theta alpha. So taking this up, acceptance angle for the earth and sun, as I told, if I take for the earth and sun, so that half acceptance angle theta alpha is, itself is 0.267, means the earth what is receiving the solar radiations on a given area, that acceptance angle maximum itself is 0.267 degrees theta alpha. Even if you take 2 theta alpha, because we are taking total acceptance angle, two times also if you take, it is around 0 0.5, 0 0.5 degrees. So on that basis, if I take the values and substitute in this maximum concentration ratio, 1 by sin theta alpha or 1 by sin square theta alpha, the concentration ratio, maximum concentration ratio for a line focusing concentrator is up to 215. So anytime if you want to design a cylindrical parabolic systems with line focusing systems, the maximum concentration ratio achievable is 215, not more than that. Similarly, point focusing concentrators. So point focusing, as I told you, this is the point focusing paraboloidal system. This is the line focusing. This is area focusing. Here, the solar radiations are focused on not on line or point. It is focused on a surface area. So for that, all we have a limiting factor. So for a fo point focusing, if you go maximum, I can go up to 46,000 concentration ratio. So I can increase the cons uh, aperture area 46,000 times than the absorber area. That is the possibility. Okay. And also to overcome the losses, we can go for the overcoming tracking errors or imperfections in the mirrors. Okay. Or the mechanical alignments. Next, you can see how these different systems will give us different concentration ratio depending upon that, what temperature can be achieved. So till today, you can see for the temperature range 0 to say for example 700 degrees centigrade, in that case, I can go for a flat rate collector with concentrating uh, reflectors or parabolic cylindrical type arrangement where the concentration ratio is achieved up to see here. 10 and above that value. So nearly 10 raised to uh, 1.5 or something. Up to that, if you go for the concentration ratio for a line focusing, I can achieve the temperature up to 600 or 700 degrees centigrade. Similarly, for the concentrating heliostats. So heliostats in the earlier class, I have told you, the fixed flat reflector or a mirror, flat mirror, if you see, is called as heliostat without any tracking system. So stat means it is static, fixed uh, mirror, which is fixed on the land. And helio means light. Okay, so heliostats which are fixed on the ground, which are focusing the solar radiations towards a tower or a any power plant. In such cases, we are calling it as concentrating heliostats. So the temperature achieved for that uh, systems are up to 700 to CL, 700 to up to around 1400 degrees centigrade, you can achieve with the power plant arrangements. So in that cases, I can go for some oil to convert the oil into vapors and I can turn it into turbines. And the see the concentration ratios up to 10 raised to 3 means 1000 times. 1000 times I can go for the concentration ratios. Similarly, paraboloidal systems, dish systems like this uh, dish type paraboloidal system, if I go to concentration ratios, what we can achieve is 10 raised to 3.5, somewhere here, up to here, and from 10 raised to 2.5, 10 raised to 2.5 to 10 raised to 3.5. If I go for the concentration ratios, I can get temperature range between 1400 to up to 1800 degrees centigrade for the paraboloidal 
shapes. Then rest all you can see is co coming under the furnace because the temperature is beyond 2000 degrees Celsius, 2000, 2400 or 2800. So these temperatures can be used for melting the metals or can be used like a furnace. So this solar furnace in that the concentration ratio you can see more than 1000. 1000, 10,000, then black. 1 lakh. Okay, up to that they are trying to achieve. But here you can see the limit. Limit is near to 10,000 or I can say 50,000, whatever is given here, paraboloid or point focusing type. The limit is up to 46,000. After that, you cannot go beyond the increasing the concentration ratio because the acceptance angle itself is less. Is that clear? So, in the furnace, you can see up to 3000, I can uh, generally say up to 3000 is achieved at present. So one of the example is for solar furnace, in the Australia they have planted that solar furnace. This is the uh, solar plant, which is a furnace. So it is one of the, uh, what, what you can say is a experimental setup for some research work they have designed it. So it is in Odilo, France. You can see the link there. Solar furnace at Odilo, France, not Australia. Australia, I think one more design is there. So here you can see the aperture area. Yes, the aperture area itself is a building. This in this on this building, they have connected all the reflectors, the concentrators. These concentrators are going to reflect back the solar radiation towards the center of this. Furnace. So furnace is on this building. Say for example, it is having uh, ground, first floor, second, third, fourth floor. For the fifth floor, you can say. On the fifth floor of the building, the absorber point is focused. At that point, a furnace chamber may be designed. And that is going to receive all the solar radiations from these reflectors or the collectors which are fixed on this building. Okay. So I can say the entire campus and the building itself is a solar furnace. And once it receive, uh, achieves all the temperature required, it can melt the metals, like in electric or the other furnaces. But here energy utilized is a natural energy without any pollution. And naturally, whatever the energy received from the solar radiations, it is capturing. Now the question comes, sir, so what about in the east and west side? The solar radiation is starting from the side of the building and it may sunset at the other side of the building. In that case, there is no solar radiation falling on this building. Or even if the east side is facing towards the collector and on the west side, behind the building, if you see the sunlight, there is no solar radiation focusing on this light. What they have done is, the building is parallel to east and west side only. But what are the solar radiations falling on the heliostats fixed on the ground? Okay, here the sun is not brought to horizontal direction and it is focused towards the furnace. What they have done is on the ground they have fixed some heliostats. Those heliostats, depending upon the sun position or the tracking system, they will focus solar radiation towards this building or the collector. Then it will reflect back to the solar furnace. Okay, so like this, we can go for collector with different uh, combinations, not only one collector. I can go with ground reflectors like heliostats or the flat mirrors. Those will reflect the solar radiations on this building or the collectors. Then these reflectors on the building will reflect the solar radiations toward the furnace. With this, some intercept factors will be there, like losses will be there. Optical losses on the ground heliostats optical losses on the building the reflectors all together will give uh, the remaining insert interceptor factor that solar radiation will be received by this furnace okay or you can say some images here just a minute with the ground heliostats what i told you can see here trans furnace So here you can see 
reflectors on the ground. Yes. All of you can see this image. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, yes. In, in this example, you can see how this concentration ratio will help us and how this um, more acceptance area or more acceptance angle to be formed and the concentration ratio, how we are improving. We are taking a point in this furnace. We can say fifth floor itself is a furnace. Okay. So at that point, the receiver area is very small. Aperture area is very large. And to improve this aperture area performance, what we have done on the ground, heliostats are fixed here. See, these are the heliostats, these are the mirrors, not fake, focusing towards the photographer here. They are focusing towards or facing towards the big aperture area or the collector area here. And you can see on the image, on these images, you can see the ground heliostats which are focusing here, which are towards the building. With this, what I am telling is. If you go on increasing this aperture area by multiple reflectors, say for example, video stats are added here, this is also aperture area. Still, aperture area is increased by these reflectors, okay, multiple reflections are going to take place. Then we are going to focus all these radiations to a point. Okay, and to overcome some uh, solar radiation problems, we can go for insulation of this uh, front side of the building, whatever is there in the front side, you can go for some insulation or some work. Uh, different type of glassing arrangements. So by this example, one can understand what is the importance of this uh, concentrating collectors nowadays. The next part you can see, we will discuss on thermal analysis of the concentrating collectors. I have taken in general equations for all the concentrating collectors, I have considered this uh, thermal analysis. In earlier syllabus, the focus on thermal analysis is very less. But as present syllabus, you can see the thermal analysis is also very important. So in shortly, I will tell you uh, it is nothing but a flat rate collector analysis itself. But we are going to introduce new thing or the new parameters like uh, concentration ratio, efficiency of the uh, collector system. And one more, you can say a heat removal factor. For using those factors, we can analyze this uh, thermal analysis of the uh, thermal efficiency of the concentrating collectors. So, as like in flat plate collector, as I told, the energy balance we are giving useful heat gain by the absorber plate or the fluid which is passing is nothing but the area of the absorber or the receiver into solar radiations received on that absorber plate or the solar insulation. So that insulation we are going to call it as yes or the solar radiations received on the absorber plate minus heat losses. Okay, so from this general equation, now these losses can also be told. As I told you, the losses may be due to convection, radiation, or optical losses, depending upon that. Uh, I can call it as overall heat loss coefficient, UL. Because this overall heat loss coefficient means it is a combination of conduction loss, radiation or convective loss. Depending upon that, I can take total overall heat loss coefficient, UL, and the plate area or the absorber area and temperature difference to the surrounding area. So in that case, I can finally define this as QU or the useful heat gain by the plate or the fluid which is flowing in certain tubes. That useful heat gain to you, I can write it as area of the absorber. Okay. And if in case if we have given heat removal factor, you can multiply with that heat removal factor with this complete answer because the heat removal factor will decide how much is the useful heat gain received by the plate or the tube. So FR into A you can tell. In general, if the heat removal factor is not uh, having much uh, difference, I can write it as area of the absorber itself. Okay. In bracket you can see solar radiations received, total solar radiations received 
and specially for the concentrating collectors as i told because of the losses optical losses and efficiency of the entire collector because of the tracking system a misalignment between the absorber and receiver or if you see the liquid flatbed collector without any reflector there we have not taken efficiency because the collector area and the glass cover area or the absorber area all were same without any concentration and in that case what is happening the losses of the solar radiation will be less because losses is only because of transmissive and absorbed of the glass cover nothing less losses were due to the side top and bottom loss of the plate of the absorber plate itself but here what is happening the solar radiation what is received on the collector is different but here we are talking about the absorber plate so in that case you can multiply that efficiency of the collector, concentrating collector with this solar radiation for example you can see this uh, sketch in this total solar radiation received on the aperture is this much after losses see after losses after this optical losses or the losses mechanical losses or the other losses from the reflector the solar radiation received by the absorber is having some difference so in that case what i can do is i can multiply the efficiency factor yes into efficiency minus of losses what is the losses overall heat transfer or heat uh, overall loss coefficient you will now concentration ratio term is taken here you will by c into bracket the mean plate temperature or the absorber temperature minus ambient temperature so using this type of equations and some correlations depending upon the given terms i can find out what is the useful heat gain by the absorber or the receiver so here i cannot say q plate or uh, point focusing it depends on different concentrating collector so depending upon that you have to choose uh, heat removal factor f or area of the absorber it depends on the shape then total solar insulation radiations efficiency efficiency is also depends on the different concentrating collector that's why i have not shown in the general equation so depending upon that efficiency a little bit low solar insulation should be received on the absorber then concentration ratio so concentration ratio also depends on different designs so once you understand this equation you can analyze the heat transfer relations <clears throat> so we we'll discussed this uh, parabolic dish uh, thermal analysis uh, just with some equations what to be how to be analyzed with the parabolic dish type one example have taken on the similar lines so i can understand this uh, parabolic dish thermal analysis and we'll uh, stop this topic okay after uh, 10 minutes now here you can see first thing you have to focus on the solar radiations solar radiations are taken on this dish collector circular area which is the aperture area and then because of this circular shape parabolical shape the solar radiations will be reflected back and this efficiency depends on the optical losses so this optical losses can be found out by multiplying this energy received from the sun so energy received from the sun we are focusing main on the beam radiation because we are whatever the diffuse radiations may be falling on this total radiations but later the diffuse radiations will not be reflected in the same direction okay the diffuse radiations will be moving in any directions so those losses also come into picture that's why we are focusing only on the beam radiations depending upon that what is the total solar radiations incident on this area so that area into beam radiation falling from the sun then losses you can see due to optical losses i can say that total solar radiation received into bracket 1 minus rho into efficiency of this optical system okay so the rho is index factor depending upon the glass and air or glass to the absorber we have taken this uh, refractive index factor and depending upon that this losses can be found out what is the actual losses by the optical system 
then other losses may be due to tracking system or due to the alignment system. So that is not shown here. We are focusing only on the solar radiation losses. Now, whatever the deflected is there, reflected uh, from the meters are there, that energy of the power is received on the receiver. That is what, that is the solar radiations after this factor, 1 minus rho into efficiency, the left out radiations are the uh, intercept factor. So that left out radiations, I can write it as energy from the sun into rho into efficiency or optical efficiency. That much radiation is falling on this receiver. Now, how much energy is received or absorbed by the receiver that is given by inside radiations, you can see here, inside radiations, radiations on the observer is the solar radiations into bracket. These all losses you have to multiply. What are the losses? One is the refractive index. Another is the efficiency of the system. Then intercept factor. Then acceptance angle. These all factors will affect the solar radiations and some lower radiations compared to this total solar radiation. It will be less radiations will be falling on this receiver. Okay. Then after that, what is going to do? Here one example or the application part is the received radiations on the point focusing type is taken to a boiler and this boiler will run okay, by converting this uh, solar radiations to transfer the heat to the fluid which is passing inside this cycle and it will convert all the liquid uh, fluid or fluid in the liquid form to a vapor and that vapor can be passed in the turbine or whenever some cooling is required you can go for the dry cooling uh, to pump this uh, coolant and it can maintain the temperature required and this vapor form of the fluid can be passed to the turbines and the turbine will run by generator to get the electricity okay so that short it is shown here a boiler okay after the receiver and a cooling system or to maintain the temperature or the reconditioning system you can see then we have an alternator. So only this much is shown. So depending upon that, one can understand it's for the power generation application. Now, depending upon the stirring cycle or the steam cycle, whatever the energy received by the steam to form the steam, which is the solar incident radiation, is nothing but the solar inside radiation, which is coming from the reflector, minus the solar radiations which are losing from the boiler. So that is the effective solar radiation received by the boiler, I can say, for the thermal power application. Okay, now from this receiver, what is the energy lost to the atmosphere? That we are taking temperature of the atmosphere. Okay, and the losses from the receiver, I can say, it is again a combined effect. It is like a convection as well as radiation effect. So due to that, both radiative and convective heat losses, I can say total heat loss from the receiver is Q R out. Whatever is R out is written here, I can substitute here for lost heat. That is heat transfer coefficient by convection HR area of the receiver AR into receiver temperature or the absorber temperature because some books have given TA or TR or it may be TP, TPM. TPM means plate mean temperature of the observer side minus TN. Similarly, radiative heat transfer losses can consider it as super Boltzmann constant epsilon sigma into emissivity of the plate epsilon depending upon the material. Then again, area of the receiver into bracket, temperature of the receiver is to 4 in Kelvin. Temperature should be in Kelvin for radiation. For convection and convection, you can keep it in degrees centigrade minus sky temperature or the ambient temperature raised to 4. So like this, what is happening, whatever the solar radiation is falling on any given system, we need to consider refracted radiations, losses or refracted radiations. Then we have to find out what is the effective or the useful heat gain by the system like a boiler. So one boiler example is taken here. So like this, you have to take each type of uh, different systems like uh, cylindrical parabolic system, 
or uh, concentrating fractate collector based on this also you can find out whatever the heat coming from the solar radiations and how much is the loss in optical system and what is the effective solar radiation received on this absorber plate similarly effective solar radiations received on this absorber tube similarly solar radiations effectively received on this point focusing boiler or a furnace like this so next class we will discuss uh, some more part on this uh, solar collectors and we will solve one of the numerical to understand uh, the importance and how to find out the unknown value from the given problems. Okay. So any doubts up to here in the concentrated collectors definitions, uh, heat transfer equations. Okay, if uh, no doubts are there, you can stop the class here. The so next class on Monday, we will discuss on uh, problems and uh, other uh, different types of these solar concentrated collectors.